Thank God that our Lord Jesus is our shelter when it comes time of healing. Uh, it's been quite cold recently. And many of us have suffered uh, from cold. And for those of us who stay home because of illness, uh, your home becomes your shelter. And some of us might be bullied at the workplace. They will be able to find uh, their home to be their shelter. So from these examples, we can tell having a family is very important. So when having a happy family, You'll be able to rest well in your home. If you're not having a happy family, you'll be having a hard time at home. So we can tell that having a happy family is very important. In order for us to establish a happy family, uh, there's a concept that we all have. Being Asian, we have our own concept of have, what a happy family means. In the Western uh, society, uh, they have their own concept of what a happy family means. So there's a distinction between the uh, Asian society and the Western society. So it, it, it will be hard for us to reach a uh, consensus when it comes to what happy family means. And today, we need to make sure that we don't give up on uh, having a happy family. And today, I'm going to use a family that's mentioned in the Bible for our uh, encouragement. And this person is Joshua. And let's take a look at the uh, records in the Bible. Let's turn to Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. So but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. According to this verse, this is what Joshua has said to his household. Uh, at the time when this verse recorded, I believe Joshua was well in advance in his age. He said it with confidence to his household. To his people, he said, uh, if you 
uh, if it seems, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then you can choose to serve gods beyond the river. Or to serve the gods of the Amorites. Joshua said in confidence to his people right here. To provide a choice to his people. To uh, provide a comparison to his people. Joshua then said, As for me, and my household, that means his family. And what do they do when it comes to serving the Lord? He said, uh, with confidence that we will serve the Lord. And why did he choose to say this to his people? I'm sure there's some uh, significance behind uh, in his saying. He said, I know that he felt deeply that God has guided him all alone and provides security and protection that's needed. Because uh, the Lord's guidance, uh, Joshua was able to complete the task was assigned to him. Then again, he mentioned about his family. It proves that his, he had a happy family. It also shows that in turn that his family brought honor to him. So from this, we can tell that Joshua prioritized God over the other things. That's why Joshua was able to say this to his people with confidence. If he was uncertain, then he would, would, uh, he wouldn't be able to say that I and my family serve the true God. And from his conversation to his people, we can tell that he had a happy family. And there's a few things, a few points I like to bring up uh, in Joshua's life. So that we will be able to learn from him as an example. So that we can this can serve as an encouragement to all of us here with families. Uh, we often hear that uh, we all have a skeleton in our closet. So in order to so if you have a happy family, you will be a dream come true. And from his conversation to his people, we can tell. And have summarized a few points I would like to discuss with you. Joshua's family. He, uh, he wanted to establish a family uh, that comes with authority. But 
uh, he would like to establish an authoritative family, but uh, please uh, do not misunderstand the meaning behind this. Uh, when I mention authoritative, uh, you would think that the elders in the family would be the one that's in charge. And this is this sort of a, a very uh, big distinction between uh, the, what, what Joshua had in mind. And when we read chapter 24, verse 15, on the second half of verse 15, Joshua says, and uh, we will serve the Lord. Even though he was uh, well in advance in age, he was holding himself as the uh, authority. And what, what would I mean by uh, being the uh, authoritative figure? And I mean the Lord, true God. As for our own families, uh, uh, the Lord is the head of our family. Uh, to put the Lord Jesus as the head of the family, and this is an uh, easy concept for many of us. So this, is, this concept is in line with what Joshua had in mind. Let's turn to uh, Colossians chapter 1. Verse 17 and 18. Colossians chapter 1, verse 17 to 18. When Paul encourages the Colossians church, Seventeen. He is before all things, and he, in him all things hold together. Eighteen. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. So from these verses, we can tell Paul confirms that the Lord Jesus uh, is placed the as, as the head. So that's why I said the Lord is the head of the family. So in and you can see in a lot of the Christian family, they would uh, hang a frame that says that the G Lord Jesus is the head of the family. And they do that in order to uh, encourage themselves. It's also a uh, indication of their faith. And that's why uh, a, a lot of Christian family would like to do that. And all of these are fall in line with uh, Joshua's concept of uh, what a uh, faith should be. So in Joshua's conversation, we can tell that Joshua placed uh, the Lord as the head over everything else. So 
if a family uh, is able to prioritize the Lord over everything else, then you, you will have a, a happy family. Then that serve as a common goal for all the members in the family. Uh, from the conversation that Joshua had uh, with his people, it mentioned uh, this, uh, the second significant point that you should have. That you should be able to submit to the authority. Uh, to, to submit yourself. Uh, we talked about uh, having the authority established over the Lord. And it's different when it comes to uh, having an authority. From the guidance of Moses and Joshua, God handed over the authority to Moses. Moses then passed it over, turned it over to Joshua. This is the uh, authority of a leadership. If you're able to obtain uh, a happy, having a happy family by establishing authority, and I would think that you would need to submit to this kind of authority. Uh, let's turn to First Corinthians chapter ten. First uh, Corinthians chapter eleven. Verse three. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three. The first we just read. And this is what Paul had encouraged to the uh, Corinthian church. Uh, he talks about uh, submission to the authority. And when it comes to Western society, uh, we ask for equal rights. So we places, uh, we, we place we place emphasis on having gender equality. In uh, in 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 Asian society, we uh, place emphasis on patriarch. And this is the difference between uh, the Asian society and the Western society. Going back to the Bible, and it tells us that the authority that we receive comes from the Lord. God created man first. And this is the order that the Bible tells us. And if you be able to follow this, then you're following the authority. Sometimes uh, it's hard uh, to handle having authority. Sometimes we uh, might describe men being the head and women being the neck. If the neck's not turning, how the head's going to turn? Then uh, I would say, fine, why don't you be the head, woman? 
也就是你要付出一番的劳力呀、啊。And, and that's why you need, it takes some effort to change things around. And by having the authority, you will have to take on a, a bigger responsibility. God handed over the authority to man. And which means uh, we need to, uh, we need, uh, it takes more effort for, for the man. That means by having authority, you will have to, uh, it takes more efforts out of you. So, in some writings, you will be able to get a little bit more effort. In my reading, some article that uh, being uh, as a woman, if you're able to be a little soft, then uh, your life would be easier. This is another way of saying it. And this is, an, uh, this is not a way of uh, saying this. So, uh, like this question, we all need to understand how to live a better life. And we need to make sure that we understand how we can serve one another. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. 21. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. If you, uh, if, if you're able to uh, submit to one another out of reverence, then you would know how to uh, submit to one another. Uh, when it comes to having a reverent heart, uh, it's, uh, it's based on the agreements of uh, your family. And what does this agreement entail? That you're, you're supposed to have, you're supposed to uh, have a reverence for God. If you're able to submit to uh, one another out of reverence for Christ, then you would have a happy family. And Paul understood the concept behind this. In verse 22, Paul says, Wives, submit to your husbands as the, to the Lord, as to the Lord. 23, For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. Paul was very eloquent that he was able to connect the church to Christ. Uh, Paul was able to uh, combine uh, the, 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 the Christ church and husband and wife as one. So today, as a husband, you should uh, take on the responsibility of being a husband. The Bible tells us when it comes to submission, you're supposed to submit to the Word of God. As a husband, your family is supposed to be established on the foundation of Christ. Uh, 
And this is what the Lord entrusts the husband so that the husband is able to establish a complete perfect family. So this is submission. So the, the Christ uh, is supposed to be the head of every family. Then the husband would be the leader of the family. Wife and the children along with the husband supposed to keep the words of the Christ. And this is the order that we're supposed to follow when it comes to uh, submission. And this is what you're supposed to do in order to have a family family like what Josh was. And my third point. We're supposed to uh, accept one another and appreciate one another. It's very precious that all the family members are able to appreciate one another. And parents, of course, would uh, find their own children very likable. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, what their children look like or their intelligence, uh, they will still find their children likable and adorable. And this, is, this has to do with being, uh, 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 being accepting. Sometimes uh, the relationship between spouses are not harmonious. And if you add your uh, the uh, the the elder, elders of family to the mixed, and sometimes the uh, the elders in the family do not appreciate. The younger generations. And uh, this is a generational family problem. And if you're able to appreciate one another in the family, this is uh, one key to establish a family, a happy family. Joshua mentions that he and his families are able to serve the true God. And this is one key point. In Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 9, it says, uh, Joshua received a lay of hand from Moses. Joshua then was able to be filled with wisdom. Afterward, the, the people of Israel uh, were able to uh, follow the instructions of Joshua. The people of Israel was able to open up and accept Joshua. And vice versa. There are also mixed multitudes involved in it. And Joshua accepted all of them. And 
it's because Joshua received the wisdom from God. Joshua then be able to obtain uh, the ability of uh, appreciating others. So what we need to do is we need to ask for the, uh, uh, to the ability to appreciate one another from God. And my, to my fourth point, uh, the reason why Joshua was able to uh, lead his family so that they all ended up serving the true God. And there's a few important things. It is to establish a fellowship in your family. Joshua and Moses uh, walk in the wilderness. Joshua's family also walk in the wilderness. So and through this experience, Joshua's family uh, was able to see uh, what he had done very clearly. The only reason that they be able to uh, obtain happiness while being in the wilderness is because they have the life of fellowship. They establish the life of fellowship in the wilderness. By having a life of fellowship, you are you, you can be more communicative. The fellowship serve uh, your family by uh, by sharing your problems, by uh, encouraging one another. By being in the wilderness is uh, nothing exciting. You're not having any uh, delicious food. But if you have a life of fellowship, you will be able to uh, encourage and comfort one another. And that's why it is very important to establish a fellowship. If you're able to serve uh, in one heart as a family, and this is how you establish connections and relationship through uh, having a fellowship. Let's turn to the book of Rome, chapter 12. Uh, let's turn to the book of Romans, uh, chapter 12, verse 13. Uh, verse 3. Four. Three, four, by the grace given to given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgments in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Four, just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. Five, so in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. 
and in these verses, and uh, they tell us uh, we all connected by our body parts. And this is the importance of having a life of fellowship. And we're all connected to the Christ. And to the fifth point. Uh, you ought to educate your children to, uh, so that they can keep their faith. When the Israelite people uh, walk in the wilderness, God taught them something very important. God taught the people through Moses. So in Deuteronomy, and chapter 6, verse 7, it talks about the importance of educating of uh, your children. So you're supposed to educate your children so that they can keep the faith. In verse 7, it says, in, impress, uh, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. And this is an ask from the Lord for the children. We need to make sure that they keep the commandments when they're young. We need to uh, make sure we spend enough time on educating our children. So that they can keep the teachings in the Bible. In your life. Uh, due to the influence of our life or work. Sometimes we might overlook uh, the education of our children. And when I say the oversight, I don't mean the education provided by the school system. When I say uh, overlooking the education, I mean our religious, religion education. If we didn't educate, provide RE education to our children like the Israelite people, we will be easily strayed. After the passing of Joshua, they move on to the time of Judges. The people of Israel started to leave the true God. In no time, the Israel people strayed away from God. The teachings in the wilderness for 40 years serve. It uh, didn't lead them anywhere, and when it comes to time with judges, they have uh, strayed away from God. And for us, in this, uh, in this world that we're in, if we don't spend time and effort educating our children, 
it's, pos it's highly possible that our children will be uh, influenced by the world. If we, however, make sure that we lead our children and make sure they participate in the religion education, and we need to make sure that they know the true God, and we also need to make sure that they approach God and get close to God, and we also need to make sure that they experience God, and most importantly, that need to rely on rely on God. So, in Proverbs 22, verse 6, it tells us that 6. Train a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. And this is why it is important that we need to make sure they have a proper, they receive proper our religion education. If we do not do that, once they grow up, they might be influenced by the society. You don't want to say to your children that why don't you come to church when they're older? And that might in turn, they may in turn give you a bunch of different reasons. If they stop coming to church, they, they always come up with reasons. When the Israelites move on to the time of judges, they have changed. And sometimes if we do not teach our children properly, when they grow up and enter the society, they may change as well. And if then you're going to talk about establishing a fa happy family, then it would be highly unlikely. And you might end up, you know, end up uh, uh, shedding tears for your children. And in my sixth point, uh, we need to make sure the whole family is turned to God. Joshua uh, mentions to his people as I and my family. So they serve the true God. Uh, they're able to, uh, Joshua was able to establish a happy family because they serve the true God. If some of the family members are not believers, you may end up having uh, arguments over uh, religion. I once uh, visited a family. The wife in the family is a believer, but the husband is not. We paid a visit to them because we wanted the husband to come to church as well. In the, in the middle of the conversation, the husband uh, says, the husband tells me that I don't want to go to church. Because 
And the reason I don't want to go to church is, you know, uh, the church my, that my wife goes to, a lot of members uh, worship certain uh, political party. Wow, so the husband and the wife start to argue over uh, politics. And in the end, uh, I have to stop them from arguing. If both of them were believers, such problem wouldn't exist. If you have your whole family coming to church and believe in the Lord, then it, it's deemed that you have a happy family. So in Acts chapter 16, verse 31, in verse 34 it says, uh, the Joel was receiving um, Paul and his people. And at the end, the Joel and his family became believers of Christ. The Bible says, because they believe the Lord, they are happy. They receive joy because they believe in the Lord. So it's definitely wonderful if your whole family believes the Lord. And I'm going to move on to my seventh point. To establish a happy family. This family will have to establish a family altar. This having setting up a family altar is not uh, is not dogmatic. It's a practical question. When you have family altar, you'll be able to worship God through it. Uh, in the Bible, it mentioned when Joshua was in the mountain. Uh, the Bible mentioned that Joshua established an altar for the true God. The life of established altar. Supposed to uh, set up an example for Joshua's family. His family witnessed how Joshua uh, had experienced God and what he had done for God. When facing difficulties in life, they established family altar. And of course, today we no longer need to uh, we, we no longer have the life of family altar. When it comes to New Testament, what, is, what, what replaces family altar? It's to establish family altar. It's to have family fellowship. And what's so hard about having a fellowship is just simply 
gathering all your family members and uh, talk about God. Then all your difficulties that you face in life can be easily solved. So in Joshua's life, he led the people of Israel. And during this process, the the, the 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 children of Joshua have received uh they have learned greatly from Joshua. He has been teaching his family. When facing difficulties they would uh kneel down and pray to God. When Paul was preaching the gospel, he and his people uh, went to the uh, Philippians. And uh, when they arrived in uh, Philippines, they and uh, Lydia is a very uh, faithful woman. Uh, she was in a business selling cloth. And I suppose that her family would have family fellowship. And through the Holy Spirit, Paul and uh, his people have arrived at her place. And thereafter, uh, Lydia and his family, her family was able to establish uh, in Acts chapter 16. In verse 14, it says, uh, uh, she, she was happy when she heard uh, what Paul talked about. So she, uh, so she, okay, she, she makes sure that uh, Paul stay and uh, she listened to Paul. And Lydia and her family received Paul. Because her family has a family altar so that they be able to receive the Lord. And this is why it's important to establish a family altar. Joshua and his family. Uh, his family uh, witnessed what Paul had done. Joshua has established a family altar. So that his family uh, served the Lord. And and that's why we all need to learn how to establish a happy family. And this is based on the Bible. And we will be, uh, well, if we were able to do that, we will be pleasing to the Lord. And may all your family become ever more happy. And may all your family be blessed.
session to hymn book. 27. 